While we're waiting for, for people to come in, I just want to let you know that there's two of us working today. Uh, I'm going to be doing the majority of the presentation, but Judy Bowling is also with us. She is uh, also involved uh, heavily in STEM and will be chiming in and helping us out. She's going to be doing the back channel. And um, I may not catch all of uh, your comments or thoughts or questions in the chat, and she's going to help direct that. So please uh, feel free to put any thoughts that you have, comments into the chat. Um, and while we're waiting for the rest of the people to come in and to sign in on the sketch form, uh, there's a uh, question I'd like you to consider. I just put it up on the screen. If you would please type into the chat, what are you currently doing with STEM in your classroom? So if you're at a spot, uh, whether it's on your phone or whether on your laptop that you can go ahead and type in, it will help me because this is gonna be an interactive uh, session. We are going to uh, uh, field all your questions and you're gonna actually help direct um, how we're, what we're gonna talk about and how we're gonna talk about that in this session. So if you would please go ahead, um, type into the chat and I'm actually gonna put the sign-in sheet one more time and Val, thank you very much for just letting us know. And that's fine if we're if you all are not doing very much in, of STEM uh, content in your classroom, that is totally fine. Okay, so course curricular uh, lessons. Uh, oh, so you're only getting STEM two times a week. That's that's good to know. And I'm seeing a lot of that. Although um, mathematics is a part of STEM, it seems like students get a little bit more mathematics, uh, maybe a less amount in science, at least at the elementary level, uh, maybe a little bit more. Um, at the middle school and high school level, but engineering seems to be a gap, and that is a part of our current science standards. So um, looks like we have a new teacher, uh, Ashley, welcome. And uh, Rachel, okay, so you have yours as a special class. Okay, thank you for letting me know. Okay, so Sean, you're doing it as an after school program. Okay, great, great, thank you. Oh, you're getting a new STEM lab. Okay, excellent. Okay, Erica, thank you for letting me know. I do know there's a couple different districts that are working on STEM labs. Erica, thank you for letting me know. So you incorporate STEM daily. Okay, excellent. Okay, phenomenal science. Okay, great. Thanks, Jill. Okay, Rebecca, you're using teachers pay teachers. All right. And Hannah, using physical science in high school. Okay, excellent, second year, great. All right, thank you all for uh, filling that information. Anybody who has just come in, please uh, sign in. I just put it in the uh, the chat again. Okay, so Ms. Uh, Cara, you're doing mystery science? Okay, and you do manipulatives with your math. Okay, good. Okay, Judy, at what point do you wanna, uh, should we go ahead and start recording now or did you already start? Yeah, I already started, so we're okay. good. Perfect. Perfect. So welcome, everybody. Um, if you uh, have not accepted already, uh, you'll need to accept that we're recording this. A link will be sent out to everybody who's a part of this professional learning. And you can, you know, view, view it, review it, um, uh, share it. Actually, I think you can share it um, with other people. And uh, so please go ahead and use that. Uh, we are going to be um, of course, modifying this as we go through it uh, so that you all get what you need. So I'm going to start off with just maybe like an, an overview of some of the things that we're currently doing in Wayne County. Um, and then uh, feel free to put any questions that you have in the chat, because I am going to, you know, try to make sure that I'm um, getting at all your questions and the thoughts that you might have. Um, uh, welcome. My name is Greg Johnson. I am the STEM director. So we have a MySTEM network. So the MySTEM network is actually a statewide STEM network. It's across the, uh, the state of Michigan. There's 16 regions. I am the region director for uh, Wayne County. And we're really focusing on incorporating uh, STEM education throughout the curriculum, as well as after school activities. And I'm going to be talking just a little bit about that and give you the broad overview before we start digging into some specific questions. 
I'm just going to give you a little overview of what's currently been going on. The MySTEM network is fairly new. Uh, we started about four years ago, and um, we I used to be the director of the Math and Science Center network. Uh, the Math and Science Center network is not receiving state funds anymore, and the MySTEM network was being, it, it, you know, came about um, through legislative action. So there was a big push to have more of an integrated, what we might call a 3P learning. That's place-based education, project-based education, or place-based education going on. So more of an integration of the um, STEM content areas. And if there's uh, questions about that, I can go into that a little bit more, um, you know, as we, as we get into this. The first thing I'm going to ask everybody who's either viewing this live, who's on right now, or who is watching the recording. If you want updates sent to you on a regular basis, we have a Google group. And this is the most important. If you get anything out of what I'm going to share with you today, it's going to be this, because this is how I inform people of the opportunities that are going on. Uh, the Google group basically is, it functions like a listserv. It's just going to be an email that's sent out and it's going to have information K-12, actually pre-K-12, uh, of programming that's available, opportunities that's available, grants, uh, professional learning for teachers, uh, opportunities for students. It could be uh, courses for students, both virtual and face-to-face, -face, those sort of things. And that runs the whole gamut, everything from computer science to uh, mathematics to even uh, English language arts. We have it connected to STEM. And we we gave out some STEM kits in the summer for some summer programming where students were given books and um, uh, uh, STEM kits to do hands-on activities uh, integrated with their reading. Um, what I would encourage you to do, my support person, her name is Letitia Porter. She is awesome. She's really great. She will add you to the Google group. If you just send her an email, if a phone call is better for you, that's fine. But we will need your email address, the one that you would like um, the email sent to you. But this is the biggest thing because this is how I communicate all the opportunities. Um, so you can just send that to Letitia. All right. So a couple of the things that you may or may not be involved in. It looks like we have a variety of people, um, some people in elementary, some people in middle school, some people in high school. What you um, uh, what we have a lot of time, I'm going to you can't see it, but I'm going to I'm going to move some pieces around just so I can I can kind of see it. If you look in the pre-K grade five area of this slide, we have, these are programs that are currently going on. And I have a couple of different screens open. So if you see me look up, a, I'm not checking email. <laughs> I'm actually looking at what you see on my other monitor. So uh, we have math recovery. Uh, math recovery is really uh, uh, elementary uh, interventions. We have our lit lab pop-ups. That's the literature and STEM kits connected, those pop-ups. Uh, go on in the summertime. That's an elementary focus. Um, we have our STEM through literature. We didn't actually run this one last year, but now that Julie is uh, Judy is back, Judy Bowling was the one who was really spearheading this particular um, activity. She is she is back, and uh, we're going to be having conversations as to what we need to continue and what we need to add. Uh, moving forward into the next year. Camp Invention, that is a camp that we've actually paid for students. We run that in local uh, high schools, uh, not high schools, elementary schools. We run it in local elementary schools, and usually teachers act as the counselors, but the curriculum, all the materials, everything was covered by our grant, so we would mail those materials out. Um, this is usually done in the summer, so if you get on our listserv, you'll hear about opportunities. We'll probably be running this again next year. I do have some grant funds where we can still run these in local dis districts, and the students would actually come to whatever site you uh, you suggest, probably an elementary school in most situations, and then the students actually go through a week. Sometimes people make it into half, uh, half days, and we make that into a two-week activity. I can talk a little bit more about that a little bit later. Engineering is elementary. I can't say enough about this. It is excellent. If you're looking at how to incorporate engineering at the elementary level, not only does this curriculum have uh, everything that you need, all the materials, but it but it also has 
uh, videos that show you classroom footage of what it looks like in other teachers' classes. I find that's that's pretty huge. We're also doing a lot in uh, computer science. So code.org is who we partner with. We have uh, computer science fundamentals. We will be running more of those, those sessions. A lot of times those are um, virtual sessions. We have done them face-to-face -face as well, but I know it's convenient for people if they can um, jump in virtually. Let's let's jump down to the green section right there, the MyStar. Uh, MyStar Science, that is middle school science curriculum. It's six, eight. We have been paying um, uh, for, and that's actually developed out of Michigan, right? So that is our collaboration with uh, Michigan Tech. MTU put this together. They incorporate the engineering with all the science, but that is science curriculum that's geared towards Michigan students. The ASU modeling, that's really, um, uh, it's from Arizona State University, but that's a modeling program. That is three weeks intensive training for secondary teachers during the summer. It is awesome. It really helps us to think, it's really looking at not only the content, but pedagogy. How do we, how do we teach that? Uh, the other one right here, the 1080 drone competition, I'll be inviting new schools to join that once schools are in session. So once you get on a listserv, you're going to see some information about that. That's where we do the the UAS, the um, uh, the what we call drones, but it's um, the unmanned aerial system. So it's a little bit broader than just a quadcopter, uh, but it can they can be uh, remote controlled airplanes, could be remote controlled quadcopters. We use the quadcopters, right? Uh, Camp Invention uh, is another one. It's the same Camp Invention, but it goes all the way through uh, middle school. And of course, we have the Code.org, um, Computer Science Discoveries, and that's been training. We've been doing that the last couple of years in uh, Grand Rapids. We put teachers up in a hotel and um, teachers from all over the state, you trained uh, with, those, uh, with those teachers. Um, lastly, let me just touch a little bit about some of the things we're doing in high school. Uh, high school, we got got some really cool things going on in high school. We got uh, uh, computer science principles uh, or CSA. These are two AP courses. We train teachers so they can offer these AP courses. They get all the curriculum. We uh, uh, train them. We offer the training in the summertime. So the teachers just got done doing this training. We offered it in Grand Rapids this year for the whole state. Uh, we're also doing dual enrollment courses. So our GIS, our Geospatial Information Systems course, is um, uh, for students, they get nine credit hours free. These are three college courses, and then they're given paid internships, right? And that's through our Geospatial Technologies Talent Consortium. All of these are geared towards getting our students interested in, in STEM careers, so I'll talk a little bit more about why we want to get them in the STEM careers, but I think probably your interest in joining this uh, this professional learning opportunity, although it's only you know only not going to be more than an hour, is an indication that you're interested in this. But the the amazing thing is is not only are we interested in it, but there's a lot of opportunities for students. Uh, it's the fastest growing segment of our uh, you know employment. There's more positions in STEM career paths than any other path. So, and you'll see, we're going to look at a video here in just a minute that kind of highlights that. If you have any questions as I go through this, just kind of pop them in the chat um, and I can stop. Or, or if you just want to join in, uh, you know, I think you can unmute yourself. I think I've set it up that way. Uh, you can uh, ask a question or just type something in the chat. So right here, it just shows a pathway of what we're doing uh, for some of these programs. If, if you look at the key down in the lower right-hand side, you can see that the solid cover color, that's uh, we're giving teacher support in this area. So it's professional uh, learning for teachers. And a lot of times it includes uh, curriculum. So you're going to see, you know, we got computer science. Um, we got grants we've given out to teachers this last year. We gave out $10,000 worth of, of grants for to purchase equipment. Uh, we're having our Maker STEM Summit. That is done at the uh, the Henry Ford, so the Henry Ford Museum. Uh, they host that this year. It's going to be in February. I would encourage all of you to attend that. It's a one-day uh, professional learning opportunity for teachers. It's just incredible. Guest speakers, breakout sessions. Uh, Master Science Teacher Fellowship. That's where we take science teachers and we help them to improve their practice. It's a whole process of improving 
uh, science teachers practice. And of course, uh, next generation science teacher training. That's and that's K twelve. You can you can kind of see that this, the, all of these opportunities are pre K through twelfth grade, and that's where we just uh, help teachers understand what our content expectations are, what are our science content expectations, and then how do we work on those? Uh, how do we improve our own professional practice? We have uh, for those of you in high school, we you can see the biology pilot project, the geospatial technologies talent consortium. Uh, I went through a lot of these already. Uh, if you have some questions about this, all of these documents are electronic. I uh, I can send them to you as an email if you want to just send me an email and uh, you'll have my email address at the end of the session. Um, or Judy can kind of pop it in the pop it in the chat for people. Just send me an email. Let me know how I can help out. I've I've already been helping out um, curriculum directors who are looking at how to um, utilize their their STEM spaces. Um, and um, uh, uh, even some construction on the buildings or curriculum, what curriculum. So these are the areas that I can definitely help out in. Uh, let's look at the video. I'm gonna go ahead and play the video. This is a short video, but it just gives you a broad overview. We filmed this here at Wayne Risa, but it gives you a broad overview of some of the stuff that's currently going on and some classroom footage. So I may stop the video as we're watching it and just kind of talk through some specifics about it. How are you building your STEM pipeline? By 2025, there will be 3.5 million STEM jobs vacant in the United States alone. 14 of the 16 fastest growing industries of the future in the world are in STEM industries. Here in Michigan, we have the capacity to fill these positions with top talent. Currently only a tiny fraction of our population has the necessary knowledge and STEM skills. Potential jobs have been lost due to the lack of a qualified workforce. So what must be done to increase the number of students who aspire to these high paying careers? Building a STEM pipeline to develop the talent here in Michigan and getting non-traditional students to become STEM workers in that pipeline. Often a two year degree will make them qualified. Many students don't know about STEM careers because they do not personally know anyone working in these fields. Even more important is that these students don't often see themselves becoming STEM professionals. Why my field is full of men? Why I don't see enough ladies in, in our field? I, I don't understand. It's, it's always dominated my males. Why? When you look at little children, like elementary or middle school, they are very interested equally, girls and boys, interested in technology. But then somehow when they get to high school, Technology become a thing that women are not interested in or less interested in. So Judy was talking to Judy one day. She's like, well, my father was an engineer and he really wanted me to get into engineering. But back then I didn't like cars. So why when her dad wanted her to get into engineering, she was thinking cars. She didn't think that, well, you can be also an uh, engineer doing something else, maybe civil engineer. But then she decided that engineering is not a thing she is interested in. Our efforts must begin early, as early as kindergarten or first grade. Research indicates most students believe STEM professionals are only white males. And these students have shared that the classes they enjoyed were the ones in which their teachers were passionate, invested personal time, and who truly cared about them and their potential. In terms of the experience that it creates for our students, um, for them to have the ability to work with professionals in the field, to see people that care about them and are willing to give up their time and effort to, um, you know, teach them the skills necessary to enter the workforce if they're if they're wanting to. But ultimately, I think it's just knowing that there's people within the consortium, knowing that there's people that care about my students. For them to see that is what is powerful and causes them to work better, more engaged, to be more involved. And to feel confident that it's okay to make mistakes, but to understand I'm learning and I'm only going to be better for it. To, to be a part of that, the benefit to my students is immeasurable, in all honesty. 
and uh, I really wouldn't have it any other way. This approach can change perceptions about STEM careers, especially for non-traditional and more diverse students. It motivates them to consider choosing these new paths. Hi, my name is Astrid Marinos Nabria, and I'm a senior. My experience flying drones has been really enjoyable. Personally, I'm interested in computer science, programming, all that stuff. And so kind of being able to integrate that into also like real life machines that I can fly has been really fun. My name is Sarah Arha and I'm a 10th grader. Uh, this is my first year um, in this school and my first year doing a club. It's really fun and you get to socialize with other people. And I had trouble socializing and this was a new experience and it was really fun. I want to go to the engineering field and I think this is a good experience because uh, I can learn more and it could improve my skills later on. Like, We also need business and industry partners to help us establish and maintain this STEM career pipeline. Programs such as dual enrollment and hands-on internship opportunities are key. We had two interns. We were fortunate to have two interns here last summer. And uh, it was a hybrid model where it was partially virtual, partially here in the office. And uh, it was great to meet them and talk about uh, their experience in high school. But also what was interesting to me is that they were learning college curriculum in high school and applying that college curriculum here in the office. By doing a dual enrollment, it is amazing. The opportunity there and then getting internships, that's gonna give them a leg up on competition. Internships gives you actual industry experience. And that is more valuable to me as a hiring manager than someone that has uh, a full degree somewhere but has no experience. Uh, all of us know right now we're having a worker shortage. It's not going to get any better as we go along. So helping to engage students at lower levels to show them what's out there. Uh, many students, they go to college, they, they have a vague idea of the major they're going into. By engaging them in high school, you're able to give them a wide variety of potential things they could go after as a profession, trade, or uh, certification. The diversity of our talent on board at OHMDI is a huge thing that we're going through right now and trying to expand and diversify people in different roles and levels. We, like most companies in the past couple of years, struggled to quickly fill vacancies. There's a lot of jobs open there and trying to find those right people is, is proving challenging. Uh, STEM is at the heart of everything we do. We're a bunch of engineers, architects, planners, PIS survey. We have a lot of STEM roles in our industry and one of the reasons why i'm involved with frederick Douglass academy and, and introducing gis is frederick Douglass academy is an underprivileged school and, and we're trying to give those students an opportunity to succeed while diversifying my industry governor whitmer has proposed achieving a goal of 60 percent of the michigan workforce having a two-year degree by the year 2040 we must stimulate interest and participation in STEM fields and two-year degree programs. We can begin STEM teaching and learning sooner with students. Partner with businesses for internship programs for real-life hands-on learning. And promote dual enrollment courses for high school and college credit. So, how are you building your STEM pipeline? So all that footage was actually taken um, here in Wayne County. These are all programs that are going on. Uh, we have this page right here um, that describes some of our programs. It's actually a uh, two-page one. I'm going to show you where you can find that up on our website. Um, and it'll just give you information about some of the programming that we're currently offering. Um, but before I, I dig into that real quick, I just want to remind people, some of you I think maybe just joined the most important thing about this whole hour that we're going to be together, uh, which is drawing to a close, it's amazing how quickly it goes by, is to send an email to my support person, Letitia Porter, and being asked to join our Google group. This Google group uh, functions like a listserv. I give email updates with resources, uh, teacher opportunities, student opportunities, scholarships, professional learning, grants, all of that information. It's not you're not going to get uh you know like every week or something like that it's going to be more every couple weeks every two weeks uh, maybe in the summertime it's only been maybe once a month so um it, please if you do anything <laughs> uh 
uh, based on this, uh, this little short session we have, it's to join our STEM Google group so that you can get more information and even share it with your colleagues, like what opportunities are there. Uh, before we jump into some uh, question and answer, uh, I just want to put down there, you can kind of see, there's my email address at the bottom. Uh, it's johnsog at risa.net. And I do want to show you our website. So it's mystem.risa.net. So you all can go there, mystem.risa.net. So that is the URL, the mystem.risa.net. When you go to this, um, to this URL and hope, you know, I'm going to try to move this just because I got multiple windows open. Can you still see it? So I got yeah. a full screen. Okay, perfect. So if you once you're on this website right here, this My STEM website, there is all kinds of information. We have our flyers, My STEM regions. This is giving you a little bit of information about My STEM workforce readiness. One thing, and we got STEM programs and resources. So all of those are listed right here. I want to show you just our impact report. These are the programs that we've we've had going on uh, just this last year. It in each one of these, it'll give you just a little bit of information, like, for example, the STEM Through Literature Kits for Kids. Uh, that's one that we did. Uh, Judy was involved with that. If you click on either, you can kind of, if you mouse over this, you can kind of see that each one of these are links for more information. So let's say that you're interested, okay, what is this STEM Through Literature? This is really focused on grades three through five. And then this is a collaboration with REMSI. Right, so many of you are already involved with the REMC network, and this has information right in here. So each one of these are programs. 1080, this is our drone competition. So if you're interested in like, okay, well, I saw some video on what that drone competition was. I wanna know about what does 1080 do? And it's a little slow, but it'll eventually come up. So you can, okay, so right here, 1080 Education, we partner with them to do programming, but they have everything. We're doing the drones, but they have everything from electric cars, 3D printing, autonomous vehicles, robotics. So there's a lot of uh, programming involved. Uh, camp invention, computer science. We have all different kinds of computer science. This is our modeling instruction just for Michigan. This is the MyStar. That's the middle school science curriculum. We have playbook grants. Two Wayne County schools this last year got $10,000 grants through the MySTEM network uh, to do place-based, project-based, or um, uh, project uh, problem-based instruction in their school. Math recovery, this is elementary. This is to support students in their math. We know that math is a gatekeeper course, and if we can help students even at an early age in elementary, to, um, to do well in math, uh, they are more apt to not only get to college, but to a major in a STEM career path. Let me stop right there and just see, are there any questions about any of the, the programs that, uh, that we have been offering? Or, or just in general, what questions, what questions might you all have? Judy, if I miss something, I'm pulling it up in the chat. I don't, I don't see any questions right now. Do you all have any, any questions? I have a question. Please. I, I'm an elementary teacher. You guys are offering a lot, and I don't know exactly what I want, but okay. once I go through everything, how many are we allowed to participate in? Really as many as um, your district would allow. Uh, for example, the, like the math recovery, this is an elementary one. Math recovery is a national program. Uh, I'm mousing over it right here. I don't know if you can see that. And math recovery is, um, uh, there's training and materials involved. So the training's usually a couple days. We've been running. Uh, in fact, we just finished, I think, our third cohort this summer in math recovery. So what you would need to do is, you know, you can send me an email, of course, at any time. Uh, I can direct you to uh, where the information is about math recovery, if that's the one that you wanted to work on. But it's not like you can take these courses just at any time. Uh, a lot of them are offered in the summertime, but I know that there are going to be some math recoveries coming up here uh, during the school year. So if you're interested in that one, that one's definitely elementary. You can just send me a, an email or definitely join our Google group so that you can receive updates on those. Um, some of the other ones that are more are programs for students. 
such as Camp Invention, Invention, those are offered during the summer. So that's more of a summer, kind of a summer program. Even the STEM through literature, that's more of a, of a summer kind of program. But both of those are elementary uh, focused programs. The Lit Lab pop-up, that's more of a summer program. Um, but we have other trainings specifically in uh, science, like this one right here, uh, Next Gen uh, Science. That's actually K-12. So if you wanted to beef up your science program at the elementary level, this is one that you would that would really benefit you. So that that's a great one right there. So Val, I don't know if I answered uh, completely uh, all your questions, but what I'm hoping is that this is just, you know, the kind of like the tip of the iceberg. Maybe you'll start saying, okay, well, what what kind of programs am I interested in? What kind of uh, what kind of things might I be interested in? And then maybe just send me an email and I can help direct you to some of those. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and put this this page directly into the chat so that if anybody wants to click on that, they can actually get to the, this PDF that I'm, I'm showing on the screen. And each one of these are hyperlinks that'll take you to the specific programs. And thank you for answering or asking that question. Uh, any other questions or Judy, did you have a comment or some suggestions? Well, I, you may have covered this um, in what you just said, but there was a question um, regarding a, a recommendation or something that would be geared towards middle school math. Yeah, middle school math. The one thing, so we don't have any specific programs for middle school math except for our data science, and that one won't be that one won't be open. The data science is really targeted to high school, but we've moved that all the way down to middle school, and we're just piloting this year. So stay tuned. We're looking at um, the uh, data science, which is moving more into the statistics realm, and with that. Uh, comes with curriculum. But like I said, we're just piloting that. Now, what I can do is we have math consultants at Wayne Risa that are constantly uh, supporting uh, uh, curricular um, uh, practice, you know, so the pedagogy piece as well as making suggestions. So if you send me, if you have specific questions about math in particular and, and not integrated in STEM, but just math in particular, please send me an email and I can direct you. We have, we have um, a number of uh, math consultants at Wayne Risa who really dive deep into these into these areas and and they're great resources. So um, and thank you for that question. Uh, I just see up here uh, what happens in math recovery. So the way math recovery works is they got um, addition and subtraction. That's at the early levels. Uh, then there's a fractions one, but, but as students get a little bit older. But what they do is they analyze. Um, uh, through assessments, students' misunderstandings, and then support those, uh, like how do you teach through those, and they give you some strategies teaching through those. I am not a specialist in math recovery, and so if, uh, if you're interested in math recovery, please send me an email, and I will direct you to the consultants at Wayne Risa who are doing this math recovery work. As you'll know, a, a lot of this work right here are deep dives into content. So we have content specialists at Wayne Risa who really dig into the specifics of each of these content areas. Thank you, that, that's, a, that's a good question. I'm well, going oh, to just- oh, oh, go ahead, Judy. Well, I was just gonna put in another plug for the Maker STEM Summit, which um, I put in the chat, it will be in February, um, actually February 16th this year. So it really is designed to be teachers, teaching teachers around maker-centered learning and STEM. And then we also have a, a large maker space area where we set up a lot of different um, activities and experiences that you could take back to your classroom. So one is an invitation for you to come. We will be sending out information as the year progresses. And like Greg mentioned, if you join that listserv, you'll get information about how to register for that when we get that ready. But then also for those of you that are already working a great deal in STEM, we would invite you to consider being one of our presenters. So that information will also be coming out soon um, via the listserv that, that Greg mentioned. And so just wanting to put uh, an invitation to attend, but also an invitation to possibly present on all of your radar. Yes, so thank you, Judy. And I went ahead and put it in the chat again about the STEM Summit, the, the Maker STEM Summit. And uh, 
at the Henry Ford. And definitely we encourage all of you to uh, uh, to consider this. A lot of the, the video footage, or at least some of the video footage from the, the short video I showed actually was from that summit. That guest speaker that was there was one, was one of our industry partners, and he was the keynote at last year's uh, uh, Maker STEM Summit. And uh, in fact, you might have seen a student that was um, driving this little ball around remotely, okay? And that was taken at our uh, summit as well. So there's definitely some great opportunities at our STEM Summit. So just like, like Judy was saying, I, I really encourage you all to, uh, to think about these. Those kind of things that you learn at the STEM Summit could be integrated into any courses, right? So some of it is just exciting our students about um, you know, about STEM. And Judy, thank you for putting that information about Gus in there. Uh, the one thing I do want to show you and let um, uh, why, why our state is so interested in some of this, some of this work. This right here came out of the office, the LEO, the Office of Labor and Economic Opportunity. And it shows the hot 50 job outlook. Okay, so these are jobs uh, this just came out last week. These are the current jobs, high demand, high wage. And if you look through look through this list, in fact, let me uh, put this link. A lot of these are STEM fields. So as you as you look at this list right here, I mean, there's a huge number. You know, whether it's architecture or bus and truck mechanics. I mean, civil engineers, uh, computer information systems. Uh, dental hygienists, electrical engineers, electricians. I mean, you look through this huge list right here, and a lot of these are STEM professionals. And then you look at the number of job openings that they project, and these are the wages, and then the growth of each one of these. At the end right here, it tells you how much education that you need. So these are some of the things that I'm, I'm hoping people will share with their students, because the STEM career path is the most for sure path as far as getting jobs out of high school. So some of these jobs are available through, um, you know, even, even just certification programs or two-year training. They're not all four-year training programs. And some of them are, but not all of them. There And there's one other, there's another one right here. This is a career outlook. This is, this is statewide. I just want to show you this. This also came out just this last week. Oh, thank you, Judy. You already put it in the in the chat. Thank you for for doing that. But if you if you look at the um, this is high demand only, right? So they, these are positions that are available, but it doesn't necessarily these positions don't necessarily pay well. But if you look at the ones the high demand and high wage, a lot of these are STEM careers. So you can just kind of kind of look through that. Not all of them require as much training as others, right? So some of them uh, don't require, you know, much more than, you know, a, a certification program, which can be, you know, as little as say six weeks um, or maybe just a two-year degree. So what questions might you have about um, career opportunities and why the state is so interested in supporting uh, STEM programming, the STEM career path? If there are there any any questions or does anybody have any specific questions about the programming that we're offering here at Wayne Risa? Has anybody in our group here participated in programs or opportunities like uh, a day of code, you know, where the code.org offers resources where we give our our students some experiences, even just even if it's just a one day experience and what coding might look like? Greg, we do have a question. Um, okay. Yep. It says uh, in the jobs, does it say if it's a certification versus a degree? And then there's a handful of people who do have some experience with code.org. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. So um, as far as the first question, which what kind of degree it, it needs, if you look over, so this is Michigan's hot 50. These are the most, these are the highest paying jobs and the most projected openings. And if you look over on the far right-hand side, it will tell you what's needed. So for example, uh, architectural uh, engineers, there's gotta be at least a bachelor's degree. So um, 
but then there's others for example an electrician that's an apprenticeship right so the apprenticeships are great to tell your your students about these are the cool thing about apprenticeships is you don't incur any debt you're actually trained by your employer so you're paid at the same time you're getting training so not only do you have to you don't take out any loans you get trained and the whole time you are being paid while you're being trained and as soon as you're done with that training that employer picks you up and you're working full time for them right or you can move to another employer so i'd say apprenticeships are good are good opportunities to share with uh with our students and there's a lot of uh, opportunities so if you see the apprenticeship uh, one uh you can kind of see that that's an opening another one so like a dental hygienist that's just an associate's degree so if you look in this right hand column right here this will tell you like what is needed as far as degrees are concerned okay so i'm looking through the uh looking through the chat I, it looks like some people have been involved in the, um, uh, you know, the code.org. So thank you. Thank you for doing that. Uh, somebody had a, a question in the chat about um, current, would you say that the current STEM program is a way to boost trade careers? I'd say definitely. There are some great opportunities. We have apprenticeship programs. And in fact, there are summer programs where it gives students a, a taste of what that apprenticeship might be might be like. I share those information that it's usually in the summer, but we had a carpentry uh, program that was for middle school students and high school students that were offered. Um, there was some opportunities in Detroit. Uh, Schoolcraft College off, uh, offers some programs. Uh, th there are a number of different opportunities, and I usually send those opportunities out in our uh, the listserv, the Google group. So please definitely join those. Uh, there's another um, a group, it's called uh, MIAT. It's in Canton, Canton, Michigan. We partner with them. Uh, they are a technical training school and they have two-year programs that are in uh, to become a, uh, 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 an airplane mechanic. And they have partnerships with Delta as well as some of the other airlines. And they do a lot of the training right there on site. And then they go in and connect and do part of their training uh, actually at uh, DTW, actually at D Detroit uh, Airport. So there, there's, a, there's a lot of programs available. Uh, and some of them even have scholarships attached to them or uh, ways that they can get the program uh, for very little debt. Uh, I will, you know, I'll just mention this. Uh, Judy and I were talking earlier today just about steering our students to make wise decisions about um, their the financial debt that they may take on during uh, their training program. So when they're we're, let's say they're they're moving through high school and then as a senior they they decide that they want to be a social worker. Well, if they want to be a social worker, they really could go to any university and land a job in social work. They really don't need to go to Vanderbilt <laughs> or the University of Michigan or even Michigan State. I'm not saying that those are not good schools for uh, for those uh, uh, for that degree, but what I am saying is they're gonna leave those schools with more debt than they would if they just decided in our region to go to a commuter school like Eastern Michigan University where they could commute. They don't even have to stay on campus, right? or to Wayne State University, or, or to Oakland University. So they could actually finish up a, a four-year degree at a fraction of the cost of what it would, would cost them if they went to uh, a, an Ivy League school or a quote-unquote more prestigious school. But if, if their major is in social work or, um, you know, uh, a non, definitely a non-STEM career path, uh, we, we just need to help them be wise about that. You know, a psychology degree, usually you can't do a whole lot with just a four-year psychology degree. You're going to need to go on to either get your master's degree or a PhD. And do our students understand that? Do they understand that, you know, some of these paths, they're great paths. And if they have a lot of interest in these areas, we don't want to rain on their parade. We want to help them out. But we also want to make sure that they're not leaving school with so much debt and then a low paying job that they'll have trouble paying back into the future. So 
Um, you know, the, the, the state legislator just passed, you know, our elected officials just passed a law that's going to be enacted here in um, probably two or three years in, on financial literacy. So that means students that to graduate from high school are going to have to go through a financial literacy course. And hopefully these are the things that they'll talk about. Uh, there's a question in the chat. How do we get involved with code.org? Send me an email. There's so many programs with code.org. So if you're in the elementary, um, a lot of those programs are available in virtual classes. I can connect you with those. If you're middle school or high school, a lot of our training is in the summer. So there, you might have to wait until next summer. And we usually do uh, our trainings in Grand Rapids. Um, but actually, you that's not necessarily true. If you want to teach it as a full curriculum, that's one route. If you don't want to teach it as a curriculum, you just want to embed it with some of the stuff you're currently uh, teaching with code.org, I can connect you with that. So just send me an email. I can get you connected with, uh, with code.org. Um, there's another post uh, in the chat. Uh, they did some coding during summer school. The kids really enjoyed it. Yeah, I'd say that those are great programs. Um, coding gets a lot of, you know, the nice thing about coding is that uh, a lot of coders don't even have to have an associate's degree or an undergrad. I mean, a lot of them do, but you can actually get in, start doing some coding by taking uh, a certification program, maybe in Python, maybe in another coding language, but you can actually move into that. We're actually embedding the coding piece with our, um, our drone project. So the students that are going to be going through the drone competitions, FIRST Robotics does the same way. So it's a, a lot of times it's embedded with these other programs. Greg, can I just yeah. mention too, um, it's, as we're going through this, it's making me think, and I'm going to put it in the chat, but we do here at RISA have some materials that people can borrow um, at no cost. It's a lending library. So if there's some things that Greg has mentioned or you're thinking about and perhaps you don't have them and you'd like to try them out before possibly purchasing them yourself, um, like I said, the link is in the chat, but you are welcome to borrow some of the materials that we have and use them in your classroom and either make a decision to purchase them yourself or continue to borrow them um, here at RISA. So I wanted to make sure people knew about that as well. Thank you, Judy. And I wanna thank you to everybody who's putting uh, some information. Erica, thank you for sharing about MIAT, uh, MIAT in Canton. Um, there are just so many opportunities around. And I think just sharing those opportunities, I try to do it as much as possible through our, our listserv. Um, but uh, there, there's just so many opportunities out there. And somebody put something in the chat about adult learners. You know, the governor has, all, has set up uh, a program uh, to allow anybody to go back to college. Maybe, they, maybe they, they're an adult learner. Maybe they've been out into the workforce, but they want to go back and earn their associate's degree, or they want to go back and finish their undergraduate's degree. There's programs out there um, right now that will pay for that. And, and because I'm focusing on K-12, I don't, I don't know all of those uh, programs that are involved, but there are. So I'm get, trying to get at your question, Nancy. So thank you for putting in the chat there. There are a bunch of um, uh, programs uh, that are available. You know, uh, what is it? Uh, the governor started off, she did, uh, support for frontliners or something like that they call it those are the people during the pandemic that were you know working when everybody else is working remotely they had to work face to face but it's expanded it's not only it's not only those students so there are programs out there and i think if you start googling it you'll probably come up with those but there's programs where the the state will pay for people to get an associate's degree or to finish up the degree if they started it and didn't finish um do we put events on the Facebook page? You know, actually, I did have a uh, MyStem Facebook page. For whatever reason, it got flagged as, I don't know, as controversial. I tried to fight it. They, fro they froze our Wayne Risa uh, STEM Facebook page and then finally shut it down. So, no, I'm not using Facebook anymore. Uh, there was nothing political posted on there. There was, there, I don't know how that happened. Uh, I, and Facebook is kind of funny. You can never talk to a human, right? So I, 
I tried to do everything. I, I even had our IT people at Wayne Reese to try to contact them to work around it, to figure out what was going on. In the end, they shut it down. And so no, I am not using Facebook anymore. So uh, sorry for all of you people who love, love Facebook. Um, uh, oh, and I think just to reiterate what Judy put in the chat there, uh, the the Wayne Risa Lending Library, the you know the Risa Maker STEM Lending Library is a good one to try some of these things out. So she put a link in there. So uh, definitely, definitely consider that. I know we're uh, running out of time. We're drawing to a close. Any last questions or comments from people? I I super appreciate you you know, putting your comments in the chat. Uh, and so, you know, it hel it's helpful for me to know what questions you have or what needs you might have. While we're waiting, I'm going to type in the futures or frontliners. So the state is giving people $6,000 per year uh, if you only have a high school credential. Uh, so, that's some of the information that's futures for frontliners. There's other programs out there, free tuition for essential workers. The state's also got another program uh, where they give free tuition for adults because there was a question in there about uh, programs for adults. And I think that's, if you go to the 60 by 30 page right here. So this is the governor's 60 by 30 page. And I think you can find information for adult learners and about how how they can get free coursework. Michigan Reconnect, so that'll pay the cost of tuition and training for eligible adults. So with that, I hope that that was useful and maybe we should put that in the, uh, in the chat as we draw to a close. The 60by30.org is probably one for those of you who had, I saw it was, at least one or two questions in the chat that people had about adult opportunities, and there definitely are. So there's the link to the 60 by 30. Those are scholarship opportunities for adults. So maybe you have some students that have left the, uh, the classroom, they graduated, and maybe they need some direction on what they can do next. With that, we are two minutes out. We're dr uh, drawing to a close. Judy, do you have any Final, final things to share? No, I don't, other than just to thank everyone. All right. Thank you all. Thanks for joining us. Uh, please join our listserv, our Google group.